Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 27th of July 2021 and we're publishing a slightly different video from the norm. We're looking at some of the issues bankers discuss behind closed doors or at least within their own community, sometimes before making policy decisions. You may be surprised at how ordinary many are and that they discuss the very issues, the very same issues, that you yourself may cover within the confines of your business or home. So we shall take a look at these subject areas but first please if you haven't already done so do listen to our Tuesday morning update which we published earlier today and we've placed a link to that below. So here goes. Okay, well, we're taking you inside our membership of the London Institute of Banking and Finance to have a look at one of its publications called Financial World. Not that many people will see this because unless you're a member, you won't receive a copy. Now, this is the May 2021 issue, and we just wanted to share with you the sort of subjects and issues that bankers actually look at and discuss. I'd say behind closed doors, but of course the fact it's in a publication suggests it's not quite behind closed doors, but it's not something you normally see on the supermarket or news agent's shelf. The fourth industrial revolution and financial services. Comments and analysis. And we'll just run through some of the subjects, just out of sheer interest. This has no direct bearing per se on silver, but what it does do, it gives you a sort of idea of the agenda items that are currently being covered within the banking fraternity. And the LIBF is the regulatory body or financial body in the UK, but it has a reach that practically covers the whole of the globe. A climate cost worth paying. Bruce Davis explains how, far from being a cost, investing or investment in reaching a carbon net zero economy will provide hope of a better economic outlook for future generations. So there's a discussion about the environment. There is more to virtue than ESG. J.C. De Swan argues that professional investors should use their skills and networks to drive positive environmental and social change that goes beyond an ESG-labelled portfolio. And then, a bumpy regulatory path. What does the government's Global Britain policy mean for the UK's approach to international financial regulation? For now, there seems to be more questions than answers. We might look at that briefly. Then there's a comment about the LIBF's new risk centre. And counting down to net zero, Paul Howard gives a top-level view of how increased regulatory pressures to reduce greenhouse gas emissions will mean banks have to follow new governance requirements. So all these people talking about how the banks rule the world, monetarily perhaps they do, but they also have to comply to both social political as well as economic issues to some degree bestowed upon them by our politicians and governors. The fourth industrial revolution and financial services. A disruptive force for change. Ouida Taff introduces this special series of articles about the fourth industrial revolution and financial services. The articles examine how technology is disrupting and transforming the financial sector and what the changes may mean to people's lives and careers. Needless to say, it will be covering issues like Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, but perhaps more importantly, blockchains and smart contracts. But they alone are not all that's included in this financial service technology revolution. Going deep to learn more, 
Rebecca Poole explains what deep learning is and how this form of artificial intelligence is being developed by the finance industry to make light work of complex analysis. And this one that's really interesting us, a quantum leap in banking by Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks explains how quantum computing could revolutionize some banking operations by making super fast work of processing complex data sets. Then we have, we need to code for ethics. Matthew Hudson looks at ethical issues involved in the use of artificial intelligence, subject again, in financial services and highlights some of the benefits and risks. So there is a debate within the banking community about the use of AI, both from a practical, economic and social point of view. Let's get fidgetal. Here is a vision of the future. Millions of smart machines making billions of micropayments to each other all the time. How likely is it? And can new payment structures play their part in making it happen? And we may very well cover that on the Crypto Plus channel. But we might put it on this one too. It's interesting that... They're talking essentially about payment systems. Our former Prime Minister was once head of Apex before she entered into politics, and that is the Association of Payment and Clearinghouse Systems. And Theresa May, Prime Minister before Boris Johnson, was the head of that organisation. Embedded finance is all about the context. Christine Horton discusses how non-financial firms are embracing the idea of embedded finance as a way of providing frictionless, sorry, frictionless payment services for their customers. It can pay to be resilient. David Birch explains how technology can create a more resilient national payment system by putting three independent but interconnected infrastructures at its core. Are you getting the sort of idea about the subjects that bankers are talking about? Short-circuiting the current account, retail banking services are increasingly being unbundled, allowing customers to pick and mix the best products. In other words, an a la carte menu. What will this mean for the personal current account as open banking means picks up steam? So a la carte, as opposed to tabla d'hote. Bringing old age into new age, pensions, the greenhouse effect in mortgages, tapping the Muslim market, a champion against bias, this is diversity, go green by knowing your customer, Surve surviving a brush with Baal, or Basil as some people call it, Christopher Alkin looks at the challenges facing trade finance banks as new bar rules come into force and how the sector is likely to respond. Bringing up Brexit's baby, lack of financial education still plagues the young. And then this just goes on. Frankly, this whole publication gives you a sort of cross-section about what bankers are looking at and discussing. Let's just spend two or three minutes, that's all. Get set for a quantum leap in banking. Michael Brooks explains how quantum computing could revolutionize some banking operations by making super fast work of processing complex data sets. You've probably heard of quantum theory, the strange science of the atomic world, but you may not have heard that this theory of the microscopic could have an impact on the macro world and on the world of finance in particular. Banks have long been at the forefront of adopting new technology. Barclays, for example, was one of the first businesses in the UK to install mainframe computers. Now many banking and finance institutions are paying attention to the revolutionary potential of quantum computing. In a world where computing resources can make or break a business, the potential of a quantum advantage is too great to ignore. Why would it be revolutionary? The advantage comes because in the quantum world it is possible for atoms to be put into superpositions of two or more different configurations at once. 
This makes it almost as if they had multiple existences. They can also become entangled, which means that physically separated atoms can still affect one another's behavior even if there is no physical connection and no signal passing between them. These odd phenomena open up a world of opportunity because quantum things behave so differently. The mathematical laws that describe them are also fundamentally different. This allows the atoms to encode calculations that are impossible in the everyday classical world. So instead of calculating just one and zero, quantum computers can exploit the multiple states of atoms to do exponentially more. This results in a new kind of computing that makes quick work of what have long been time and resource hungry algorithms. Now we're going to end it there and say no more on this, but it gives you a flavour of the sort of things that bankers look at, discuss, read and make decisions on behind closed doors. Thank you so much for listening. Please, if you like this slight insight into what goes on behind the scenes, give us a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't done so, do subscribe and press the bell sign. In any case, perhaps we're hoping it will reveal to you that there are many issues that even bankers and this organization represents the most senior of them too. It shows you that it's not just all smoked filled rooms with rich bankers smoking enormously large Churchill cigars or Havana cigars or whatever, making decisions privately about your fate. Does that happen? Of course. But it's also perhaps more transparent than one may think. Until next time. Disclaimer. Illuminati silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank <music> you.